Good morning, kids, and good morning, families. It is that time of the week for our New City Catechism devotional together. And, and this week, we are jumping into question number 23. And, and we're going to dive right in. And I want to dive right in and tell you all about a story, that, a couple stories. One that you maybe have heard, one you've definitely heard. Um, but our first story, uh, if you ever heard of the, the Prince and the Pauper, and that's an old story from a long time ago. And really, the story is, is there's a, a young prince and he meets this uh, uh, lower class person that looks a lot like him. He's just a commoner in, in the kingdom that the, the prince is a part of. And, and so the prince and him uh, devise this plan to switch places so that the prince can can become a common person and, and, and live amongst the people to, to see what that is like. This also kind of plays out, if you've ever seen the movie Aladdin, what does Prince ja Princess Jasmine do? She she takes time to, to disguise herself so she can go and be amongst the people. She can step down into Agrabah and and see what the, the people that they are, are ruling, what they what their lives are like. And so why would two people do that? Why would people come from luxury, having everything they could ever want, and choose to live amongst those that don't have everything that they have? Why would they choose to live a, a life where they would struggle and why, um, not have all of, all of the things that they are accustomed to? Think about that for you. Imagine your most perfect situation. You have everything you could ever want. What does that look like? What would that be for you? And then think about this. Would you ever voluntarily, would you ever willingly leave that situation to go somewhere that may not be as good? Most of us, if we're honest with ourselves, are going to say no. Why would we leave that to go to something that's just not quite as good? But you know what? That is what Jesus did. That's what God did when he stepped down from heaven to live here on earth. He left the perfection of heaven to be and live with us. And our question today, we talked last week a little bit about why Jesus had to be fully human and we talked about his humanness but our question today and what we see today is that's going to help us better understand why Jesus had to be fully God so that leads us into question 23 when it says why must the redeemer be truly God and our answer is that because of his divine nature, his obedience and suffering would be perfect and effective. And also that he would be able to bear the righteous anger of God against sin and yet overcome death. But for us, most importantly this morning, that because of his divine nature, his obedience and suffering would be perfect and effective. So let me ask you this question. What is it that we celebrate at Christmas time? What is it that we celebrate? It's the birth of Jesus, right? And, and it's at the birth of Jesus that we see his full humanity. But it's also where we see that he's full, his full deity, his, 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 him on full display as God. And I want to read y'all just some verses that show us that Jesus was God. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So they, they've said the Word was God. And then John 1.14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, his glory as, as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 20, 28. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Colossians 2, 9. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. 
So we see through scripture time and time again that Jesus is attributed with all the attributes of God. He is fully human, but as we've said also, he is fully God. And those verses and those scriptures remind us that even though he was a human, that he too was God. I encourage you now as a family to open up to Acts chapter 2 and, and read through verses 22 through 41 together. And what this passage of scripture is, is it's one of Jesus' disciples, Peter, and he's preaching to a crowd of thousands. And this is after Jesus has been crucified and after he rose and then ascended into heaven. So now it is up to the disciples to continue the work uh, of Jesus and his ministry on earth. And so Peter delivers this message, and, and we all know this, this message because it's one of the most famous. It's what we call Pentecost, because it is when the Holy Spirit came down and entered into the bodies of the believers. And it's through this message, and it's through Pentecost and the Holy Spirit that thousands of lives, thousands of people gave their lives to Christ. And throughout this message and throughout uh, what Peter has to say, he, he gives us some truths about who Jesus was. Uh, Jesus was a man that God used in many great ways through signs and through miracles and through all of those wonderful things that Jesus performed. God the Father used all of those things to confirm to us that Jesus was the Son of God. The other thing he talks about in this passage is that Jesus was destined to die on the cross. That was always the plan. As soon as he came down, he knew what his ultimate end was going to be. And then he died, but he was also he also was raised again because death could not hold the Son of God. And then, lastly, he is now back in heaven at the right hand of the Father. So, so he was Jesus was confirmed as the Son of God by performing miracles and all those wonderful things. He was destined to die on the cross because God knew that he had to be the Redeemer. But death could not hold them because death could not hold God. And then now ultimately he is back in heaven sitting at the right hand of God. So if all of these things are true, why must Jesus be God? Well, if we're honest, only the Creator God is can recreate and give new life. If he gave us life, if he gave this world life, he's the only one that can give new life. So to be, to redeem us and to give us new life, he has to be God. And ultimately only God can bear the punishment from all of our sin. See, Jesus' humanity meant he was a worthy substitute or a qualified substitute because he was a person. But only God could bear that punishment for us. And then ultimately, if Jesus was not God, he would not have the authority to pronounce our sins forgiven. Think about it this way. If you do something wrong and you hurt someone and then you ask for forgiveness and their brother or their sister says, yeah, yeah, they forgive you. Well, they don't really have the authority to say that you are forgiven for whatever that you might have done. It doesn't mean as the same as when it comes from that person saying they forgive you. It's the same with God and with Jesus, that, that only God can be the one to, to forgive us and redeem us and bring us back. So yes, Jesus was human. He had to be to, to, to live the perfect life, 
But ultimately, only God is the one that could do that and uphold that. And he's the only one that can say you are forgiven because he is the one that we have wronged with our sin. He is the one that we have fallen short of. And so he is the only one qualified and capable of forgiving us of our sins. So that is why Jesus had to be fully God as well as fully human. Hopefully this leads to some wonderful discussion together as a family. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope your summer is off to a wonderful, wonderful start. We love you guys. We miss you guys. Have a good week. Bye.